OK, well, we're starting off uh, talking about the Princess of Wales. Uh, she's given a landmark speech to launch her life's work, as she calls it, a project called Shaping Up. It highlights the importance of early years development for children. And that got us thinking this morning about how much our own upbringings actually influenced us, you know, because they say, take the child, don't they? Mm. Take, give me the boy till he's seven and I'll create the man or woman. Um, and so... We... I'm sure it's not as complicated as you know, that, to be like, fair. <laughs> until you're seven, everything that happens to you then will shape the adult you are. But, I mean, you were working at two. age two. I know. Did you even feel like you had much of a childhood, really? No. Um... <laughs> No, on one hand, I think, wow, I had an amazing childhood because we travelled everywhere. I was constantly with my family. Um, so in that respect, it was it was great. But it definitely it definitely made me aware when I started to have my own children because, like, when I was at school, when I was at school, <laughs> um, I did go a couple of times. Um, but my family, like my mum and dad, they didn't have time to come to Parents' Day or Sports Day only because they'd be working as well. And I was really conscious of that when my own children came along. I wanted to be there for, like, everything. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just... It, it's just... It was just very strange. <laughs> I look back now, and especially as my kids... Like, I remember when all of my kids got to the age of two, I thought, God, I was going out working now, like... Did you doing... have a tutor that travelled with you? No. No. <laughs> they have to now, don't yeah, they? they do. Well, yeah. they now. by the time I got to... I think um, we were going abroad somewhere for six weeks and then they said they have to... Me and Bernie were still school age and we had to have tutors. Um, but they never checked up on it, so no, no. I don't think but we had. But for you, that, you didn't at the time think, oh, this is not right No, it's just, it's, it's just it's just very strange because it was just something that I always did. Yeah. And when I wasn't there, my family was still doing it. So I just grew up in that whole atmosphere of this is what we did. So when yeah. people would go, oh, it's, it's amazing what you're doing, I was thinking, is it? I, I don't know. It's, but then I Linda, don't know you, any different. Yeah, well, something that happened in my childhood, young, I mean, if this hadn't have happened, I would never be doing this now, because I went to a primary school in Islington called Rodfield School, and my dad was a bit of a playboy. He was always playing away. And uh, my mum decided she was going to leave him one night, so she packed us all in a minicab, took the telly with us, and we moved out to <laughs> Leebridge Road. <laughs> just just the we, telly. Just, just the telly. telly. And a few bits of clothes and everything. And we were there for six months. I went to another school and that, but because we'd left Rotherfield without telling them, when my mum went back to my dad six months later, we had to go to another school, which was called Ecclesbourne, and there was a woman there called Anna Sher, and she started taking drama classes, <laughs> and I started going to the drama classes, along with um, the Kemp brothers, Kathy Burke, mm. like, so many people, Patsy Palmer, Sid Owen, everyone. So if she hadn't left me dad, I wouldn't be an actress, and I wouldn't be yeah. here now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for you, I mean, so sadly, you lost your parents, you know, at the same time when you were very, very young. Yeah. So that must have shaped you in a different way to, to us who had parents around. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you say everything that happens to you up until the age of seven, but obviously I was four when my parents died, and I think in the, way, the thing that's shaped me is more by way of, like, music. They, I always remember them playing um, their vinyl... Trojan records at home, and there was it, there was a weird time that um, I started. Um, I had a sense of smell that reminded me of my mum and dad, um, and it was like a curry sauce um, smell. But I never realised that my brother, and we'd never spoken about it. He had the same um, thought. He had the same memory, and we both hunted down a Chinese shop that had this curry sauce done a certain way, a certain thickness, with garden peas, <laughs> and I never realised it until I okay. went to my brother and was like, oh, we're going to go for a Chinese. He's like, yeah. And I says, I like curry sauce, but I like a certain curry sauce. And he said exactly the same thing, but okay. we'd never spoken about it. So subliminally, there was, yeah. there's something that was in our memories. But I think everything can shape somebody, whether it's good or bad. It's just, um, yeah. you know, mm. yeah. And, of course, you were brought up by your, your auntie, well looked after, but do you ever wonder, would your child have been very different. I think, it, it, I think it would have been different because I wanted to be a performer from a very early age and I know that my mum was a performer. She turned... She, she, she didn't follow that route. She, she did modelling, but she didn't follow that route. She went into nursing. But I know if my mum and my dad were alive, when I says I wanted to go performing, they would have been totally go for it, mm. which is why I am... I'm that same, same yeah. person. Whatever well, you want to do, know, follow I'm your sure dream. they'd be very proud of you because you did go for it and look yeah. where you are now. <laughs> Staying, staying with childhood, actually, but, but bringing up uh, to the present day, and uh, this story concerns me so much, and we have discussed this so much over the years yeah. on Loose Women, and that is children and pornography. And there's new research out that says one in ten children under the age of nine are now watching porn. Under the age of nine. 
and a lot of it, a lot of it features violence. Mm -hmm. And I just, it just appalls me, but I just think, how do you stop this? You know, there is the internet, which is the most wonderful thing. There is social media, which is wonderful yeah. on so many levels. But I kind of go, the genie's out of the bottle now. You can't put it back in. No. Kids have phones. You know, however much you try to monitor what they're doing, you know, look at the computers, they have phones. And if they're not looking at it, one of their mates is probably looking at it at school. They're all mm. showing each other. The thing that concerns me, well, it all concerns me, but how many, particularly young boys, are watching pornography that is violent towards women and they think it's normal. And I was reading this article and there was a girl of 12 who'd had her first kiss with a boy and he started to strangle her. Oh, no. Because he had seen that and he thought that that That's was... That's what they liked. He thought that that was completely normal behaviour. I mean, you as an agony aunt mm. must get letters from parents all the time mm. with this concern about how, how do we stop this? How, I don't know if you can stop it. We just have to educate them, I presume. I don't... I don't necessarily think we can stop the social media side of things. That is down to the companies. Mm. They have to come forward. I mean, this thing about, you know, well, there's an age limit, you have to be 13 or something to be on, you know, yeah. to be on, your, on social media, but... Who checks? Any, who checks? They I mean, have to anyone, in a, a date of birth. On, yeah. on the thing, mm. so they've just got to work that out. So that has... There's some law has to come out that makes that much harder to yeah. do. And as parents... They need know, to monitor it, don't We they? have to stop... I know we're in this... Um, generation now where it's all social media and you have to go along with that but you still have to be a parent yeah you know when Kira wanted a phone at seven I said absolutely not but all my friends have got them I don't care mm -hmm. yeah you're yeah. not having one you know we've got to stop worrying oh my kid's going to hate me because I haven't got a mm. phone because now Kira's very grateful that I didn't get the phone then yeah I got it when she started high school because yeah. then I didn't have as much control and stuff but I think you have to have the conversation with them as well but I think as far as stopping them seeing it online that's got to come down to government legislation well there is um oh. yeah <laughs> again um Again, something that we've talked about a lot on this show, and you go, when is this actually coming, is the online safety bill, and this will make social media companies legally responsible for keeping children and young people safe online and making social media platforms take this content down and quickly. Um, that, that bill is currently in its second reading, I'm told. It's now at the House of Lords, mm. and apparently it will be, hopefully, passed in 2023. Don't but then it's got to be policed then yeah, it hopefully yeah. will be police. But, Brenda, I mean, it says here um, that half of 16 to 21-year-old boys assumed that girls either expect or enjoy sex which involves physical aggression. Well, OK. Um, well, so that's uh, what they start to believe. Well, it's... Obviously, there wasn't social media when I was growing up, so, you know, I, I didn't have that influence. Um, but you're saying in that, that um, paper that her first kiss at 12, I think I was, like, 15 or something when I had my first kiss. But I was really nervous about my first kiss cos my grandmother always said, don't kiss a boy cos you'll get pregnant. <laughs> You're terrified. Well, it, it, that's great, but she missed out the bit in the middle. That is the, <laughs> that you know what I mean? So it's like I, I was like, okay, I won't kiss you, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, know. you have to be careful how you word it to kids, don't <laughs> well, you? have yeah. got... I mean, your children are probably, you know, older, obviously, but you've got grandchildren now. Yeah, how old yeah. is Lyla now? Laura, Lyla's 10, she'll be yeah. 11 in March. So they're saying kids as young as nine, Linda. Yeah, Lauren keeps stuff. an eye on everything she does. She's allowed... She's got a phone now because she's going to secondary school this year, so she's allowed to go on WhatsApp, that's yeah. all. But I ended up watching porn by accident once. Oh, did you? <laughs> I put in... I Daddy, going... where are you going, Linda? Okay. You know, it's I, was going to, Daddy. I was going to a do and I was looking for a dress, so I put big women, I Googled big women. <laughs> <laughs> and all these big naked women come out. <laughs> and then the kids come in, they look to my history, they're what, what have you been looking at? <laughs> <laughs> That's the trouble, you know, they click on one thing and then it can yes, lead them can in. Can I quickly awful. say, whoever yeah. Svetlana is from Russia, yeah. I'm not interested in a good thing. <laughs> I thought it was just me. No, she's, she's after you emailing as well. me as well. Well, she's there you go. <laughs> she's a right I was one. The one. Anyway, <laughs> let us know what you think about that. I mean, we're laughing now, but obviously it's very, very serious stuff. One in ten, ch ten children have watched pornography by the time they Shocking. are nine years old.